lately my house has been snap, crackling, and popping a lot. And somebody's trying to get my attention. And so I've had two, I've had two kind of, you know, again, poltergeisty, deus ex machina kind of experiences over the last 72 hours. The first was on uh, Saturday morning. I was sleeping on the couch and my TV was on, which meant that Netflix was was up, but it wasn't, there was no movies happening. It wasn't, it wasn't even on per se, it was up, but it wasn't on. So, um, I think it's about five in the morning, all of a sudden, the second episode in the Battlestar Galactica series, the second, you know, the, the, the second one, not the first one, just started playing. I just, I'd seen the first one a few nights before, and the second one just popped up and started playing at five in the morning, unprompted. I'm like, well, what's up with that? So I turned the TV off. I was like, that was really strange. And this morning at about um, 8 o'clock on my computer, I've been uh, been working on a, a post on the Big Lebowski. So I had a YouTube page open. And it's the it's the dream sequence with, with Maude Lebowski. It's the, the gutter balls sex initiation sequence. And then that started playing on my computer at about 8.15, just like that. So some weird stuff is happening here. And not terrible. It's not not terrible. Trust me, it's okay. But, you know, a little on the odd side. I'm not I'm not spooked. The spooks don't spook me. So anybody else going through any uh any poltergeisty stuff out there in your in your lives? How about that Tim Tebow? Eh? I don't know if you guys have followed my uh, my post, but uh, back on the 13th of October, I wrote a pretty lengthy post about Tim Tebow. He was just getting ready to take over the role of starter for the Denver Broncos. And I've looked at Tim Tebow's chart, and it's, you know, it is off the charts in terms of, like, you know, being a winner, being a hero, being a warrior. I mean, you get a grand fire trying. I mean, it's clear that this guy is is will not be denied right and you factor you factor in the whole christian trip he's got like uh three planets in sagittarius so he's going to be over the board you know he'll be over the top and maybe he'll throttle it back at some point but right now he's just full of sagittarian zeal especially during the sagittarian sun phase so it's it's amazing to watch his a progression as a football player and B, watch the public opinion of him because there are people that really hate him. <laughs> they hate him. And I'm not sure where it comes from. Do they hate him for being a Christian, being an overt Christian, being a Christian uh, who wins, you know, who, who has, seems to have a, a charmed life? I mean, yeah, I don't I don't understand it. I don't I don't hate the guy. I, you know, I find what he does to be really interesting. And he's certainly not the most you know, pretty football player you've ever seen, but you can't deny the fact that he gets it done. I mean, the guy, since he's become the uh, the starter for the Denver Broncos, he's lost one game. One game. Five and one as a starter. Looks like they're going to go to the playoffs. And trust me, you don't want to face the Denver Broncos with Tim Tebow in the playoffs. Because now it's a short season. It's only four games. And if you want somebody to win you four games, that's the guy. That is the guy. I would not be surprised, and I'm going to to say it right here on 1050, since all my my peeps in the chat, I'm sure, are very hardcore sports fans. I'm going to say right here at 1050 on Monday morning that the Denver Broncos are going to the Super Bowl. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, okay? The Denver Broncos are going to go to the Super Bowl, and Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow mania is going to be off the charts. You will not be able to get away from Tim Tebow. It is coming because they're going to make the playoffs. And I, 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 again, you can't, you can't bet against a guy who just wins. And in a short season like that, it's much easier. 
can win. So, and he's getting better too. I watched him yesterday. It was the best game he's played. Best game he's played. Threw for two touchdown passes, almost had three. Um, he's on it. Tim Tebow is on it. And it's going to be fascinating to watch America's reaction against Tim Tebow or for Tim Tebow. 1051 here on Monday. So if you go to my website, you can see my latest post on the Big Lebowski. I was talking about this. I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because when I look at films now, I try to, I try to give, uh, I, you know, I'm looking at them through a particular filter or lens. And it took me about three times to, to kind of drill down into the Big Lebowski and, and see kind of what was going on there. But it's funny, it's, you know, it's avuncular, it's jovial, it's you know, stony, surreal, weird, all that stuff. But there's obviously other layers in that movie that the Coen brothers are playing with. And I think they do that in a lot of their films. You know, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I'm sure I could spend some time on that and get into the supernatural significance of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Very similar in some ways. Kind of again a picker esque. They're good at they're good at stuff like that. The Hudsucker Proxy with Tim Robbins, another Cone Brothers film. Tim Robbins and Paul Newman. So you can go to my website, robertphoenix.com, and check out the uh, the latest post. I have another post I did on Friday, I believe, as well. So trying to stay more regular with that world, and of course you can see some stuff over there on the YouTube channel. I've got a few interviews that uh, I'm going to be uploading to the YouTube channel, which I won't play on the show. Uh, some of them are music interviews. One is with David Sylvian that I did back in 1998. And some of you may or may not know who David Sylvian is. He was uh, in the group Japan. He had, he's had a pretty successful solo career. Um, he's a, um, he, is he a, is, what do we describe him as? He's a spiritualist. Uh, his, his wife was a, a fairly well-known poet from Minnesota. I forget, Janet might know who she is. Um, she's got a Hispanic last name. Anyway, they're both into this woman, uh, Amaji who is the hugging guru. And I've shared my story about Amici before. And uh, I just, I'm, you know, I'm not a guru person. Um, but Dave, David Sylvia is definitely into Amici. So we talk about that on the interview. And other things. We talk about the creative process and um, his, his career with Japan. So it's a really good interview. And um, I loved hanging out with him. He actually, you know, was we went to my friend Chris's place. And it was outdoors, great setting. It was just a super relaxed, super cool moment. And what was really funny was that later, uh, Ingrid Ingrid Chavez is his wife's name. And later, uh, my friend Chris and I went went to downtown San Francisco. And then we received downtown San Francisco. We saw David and Ingrid and their daughter running around downtown San Francisco. So that was kind of fun. It was a good interview. I'll put that up. And I've got a few others. i got the David Holmes interview which is pretty interesting. I'll put that up and then, uh, or, you know, Eric will put them up. So, you know, some exclusive content over there in the YouTube channel. And hopefully I can do some other, you know, content that, that, uh, that, that I'll create, which isn't this just show content. I'll get there. I promise. Maybe I'll even do like video horoscopes at some point. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe I'll, I'll do that towards the end of the year. So, all right. Well, listen. I'm I'm uh, I'm out of things to say, and I don't want to bore you with any more um, trivial details of my life. It's 10:55, and you've been listening to kind of a fractured version of the uh, Friday, uh, it's the Monday mashup. I'm just looking at Robert Dumbbell's um, profile: a wicked Christian who makes false accusations. That's really strange. Robert Dumbbell. A wicked Christian who makes false accusations. 
All right, so you've been listening to the Monday Mashup. I've been your, your host, Robert Phoenix. I hope you've found something of value and interest in the past 54 minutes, 55 minutes. So next Monday, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do something different. I keep saying I'm gonna do I am going to do something different next Monday. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be doing uh, some holiday-related stuff. Okay, I'm going to be looking at gifts for people because everybody buys gifts during holiday season. No matter how much we want to divest ourselves of the gift giving process, I'm actually going to go on the air and I'm going to find at least 10 cool things that I found that you could theoretically think about giving somebody or giving yourself, right? And I'm not, I don't have any deals, any sponsors or anything. This is just going to be my show looking at 10 cool things that you might like or somebody else might like. And trust me, they'll be cool. So that'll be on next Monday's show. All right. I'll even, you know, put it in the headlines or whatever. Okay. So it's uh, 1057. You've been listening to the Monday Mashup. I've been your host, Robert Phoenix. I want to thank everybody uh, for joining in on this fractured version of the show. And I will see you on Wednesday as we navigate the astrological matrix and we get closer and closer to that big, bad, bodacious lunar eclipse with Uranus going direct in Aries. So until then, until Wednesday, use your head to discern what's real, your heart to stay open and what's possible. I'm Robert Phoenix, and you've been mashing it up. We are living in a computer-programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant, and I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off.